All right, how's everybody? I believe we reached that point in our study where we know what the double integral is. Where as far as you know, we can use the double integral to calculate volumes. How we go through defining the region R, so we can get the iterated integral, so we can calculate the double integral. I believe it's you know an opportune time for us to you know just sit back, you know, just have an enjoyable seven minutes of this lesson to go further into its interpretations and its uses. Now, I wanna you know take this lesson, you know, it's not too uh, calculative, but more you know to contrast the double integral and the one variable integral, uh, see what is some of its uses and see whether we really know what's going on. Right, so you know, just um just let hear me talk for a while. Okay, uh, what I have on the board here are basically the two descriptions of the double integral and the single integral. Okay, uh, we used to call this integral, so let's just call it single integral to really illustrate the two. Um, as you can see right here, um, the, the, the way you write it is over here like this. Okay, uh, it's the function x in terms of y. x and y are double, integrate, double integrated or the double integral of that over region r and integrate the math of x. And obviously, you know, we already know when we're dealing with double integral, we are really dealing with three-dimensional space, right? Um, you will see this is, does not strictly apply for all cases, but let's just take this as it is in terms of graphing out the function. So if we were to compare the two, what's the first thing that we notice? Well, this is a function in terms of x and y, right? This is a continuation from the very first lesson so that, you know, we know what's going on. So we are always dealing with surfaces, okay? You know, when it's double integral, we're always dealing with surfaces. Why is it a surface? Well, basically because the function applied to both uh, independent variable x and an independent variable, variable y. So for each point for x and y, we basically get a surface. Um, for the single integral, we get what you call a curve, okay? No surprise about that. So really, that's the first difference. Uh, what's the second difference, okay? And remember, I was stressing this a lot of times in the previous lesson. So, you know, if you don't get it now, I mean, if you don't get it in the previous lesson, please try to understand now. Single, in, uh, single integral, we are always integrating from A to B, but as far as the definite integral is concerned, you know, from point A to point B, as you can see right here, we go from point A to point B, uh, integrate along the x-axis. When you are dealing with the double integral, you are always integrating the function, okay, this in terms of two variables, but we always integrate over the region R, as you can see right here. Um, and this will also correspond to, you know, uh, dA. Now, a lot, I'm not sure how you want to pronounce this, but you can call it in terms uh, with respect to area or more precisely with respect to an elementary area because, you know, after all, this dx is an uh, elementary length. This is an elementary area. So, um, get that clear, you know. I want, after this lesson, let's get that very clear. Double integral, you're integrating a function over an area. We always call the area r. Um, single integral, we always integrate from A to B, so we don't need to really define anything in additional to A and B. And that is why I keep on stressing, you know, the two methods, type 1 and type 2 versions of the region R. Why is that important? Well, basically, this is the diagram that we have, this is the surface that we have. I hope it's absolutely clear now that the volume that we generate, it depends on the, the surface R. I mean, you see that. So, you know, we are, we are at liberty to define the region R, or at least normally the question defines it for us. We want to find the double integral of this surface over the region R, okay? Um, if you study vectors and, you know, if you're familiar with the vector terminology, what is actually happening is that we are projecting the surface on the XY plane. So, what we're trying to do is that, oh, sorry, we are projecting the surface of the solid onto the XY plane. So, we just go vertically down and where the points meet the XY plane, that's the region R. So that is why it's very important to you know properly, properly define region R. Okay, and that's why the last two lessons was about doing that type one and type two because that's important, you know. And then later we can translate that to the iterated integral. Okay, so uh, without a surprise here, that I hope we are now very clear that the double integral gives us the volume. Okay, what is the volume again? The volume is with the area R and are bounded by the area R and the surface. So it's basically this volume that we have right here. What is the single integral? Well, the single integral gives us the area. Okay, uh, just think about it. We're taking an elementary uh, length multiplied by the height, we get area. We take an elementary area multiplied by the height, we get volume. But there is a very special case, and you know, schools like to test this a lot and also textbooks are written this all the time. Um, the double integral, yes, it does give us the volume, but there is one special case where the double integral does give us the area, okay? And I also want to mention this for completeness sake. That happens when the z is equal to 1 or when the function is equal to 1. 
um, like so right here. Now, why is that the case? Well, if the Z is equal to 1, basically, we're just uh, compressing the surface all the way down, right? We are compressing the surface all the way down. So what we are actually integrating is basically just the area R multiplied by a height of 1, unitary height. Sorry, not unitary, unit height. So when we do that, we just basically get the area, area R. So um, as you can see here, um, we can calculate the area of the region R okay, using the double integral, but that all occurs when f of x equals to 1. The height is only unit, so basically it's just the area multiplied by the unit height, you get the area. And what's the area? Well, the area is the area R. So this is just an example, if you can see right here, that we take the double integral of 1 um, over the area R, we get this, that I iterate the integral. Now, if we define the, the region R as type 1, it will become something like this. Okay, and now you can see over here that um, when I graph it out, it's basically, that is what region R is. Okay, and if we substitute inside, it shouldn't be no surprise that this is basically a single integral of G2x minus G1x because that is how you usually calculate areas that is bounded between two curves for a single integral, okay, and then we uh, integrate from A to B. Right, so well, basically that's what we have. If you let f of x and y equals to 1, you get, uh, and you, you do the, the procedures, you get the area. And the area is the area of region R, okay? There is no surprise about that, okay? It's just basically, you know, doing the single integral procedure. Okay, so that is as far as what you need to know to succeed in your course. However, I believe that it's as best that we expound more on this theory, just a little bit more. Okay, what can we say about a double integral? You see, um, a single variable calculus, right? We got a very quantity in terms of, um, I mean, in this case is y in terms of f of x. So f of x really varies, um, f of x varies y. So, you know, we can vary a single quantity. But when we are dealing with the double integral and, you know, try to understand when I say this, we have the freedom of having a, a varying quantity in the same thing as, as f, but now it's in two axes, okay? We're just taking it at a bit deeper level. So, if we were to just visualize and forget about the volume concept for now, we know the double integral gives us the volume. But what we're trying to say is that we have the freedom of changing um, x and y, okay? x and y. So we got the freedom of changing these two values, okay? And for a certain uh, unique point of x and y, we get a certain value z. So yes, it does give us the volume. Why? Because right now, z, we have the, always defined z as the height, okay? But Z can also mean a lot of things, okay? What does it mean? Well, number one, mass of a certain object. Okay, we can see over here, and this, and you probably studied single variable calculus enough for you to understand really what's going on. Let's just say we can define a density function. A density function, okay, X and Y. So now, instead of considering, let's just say a line, right, in single variable calculus, because that is the only freedom that we have, you know, varying one quantity. So we consider a line, we take the density per unit length. Okay, oh sorry, um, yeah, the unit length. Right now, we can consider the density of x and y. And when we consider the density, um, the density of x and y, so basically, we pick a point here, okay, x and y, we get, and we uh, apply the density function, we get the mass, right? So if we get the mass, and then we integrate uh, with respect to r, the whole region, what do you think we get? Well, basically, what we get is the mass of the laminar r, okay? So that's just another use. We always think about it as height, but you know, we can also define the function um, f of, as density. And now we are at liberty of varying to x and y. So basically, you know, what we have is basically a plane, region R. Each point we can get the mass. We take the double integral, integrate that, and then we get the mass. And we take the density, x and y, multiplied by the elementary area, okay, and we take the double integral of that over R. And this would give us the mass. So as you can see right now, this is a further interpretation of the double integral. The freedom that allows us to you know, vary two quantities, x and y, in terms of a certain function or get a certain quantity out of you know, what values we pick for x and y. Mass is the one. Um, that mass is one of them. Moment of inertia. Okay, what do I mean by that? Well, this laminar R, we can rotate it, say, about the x-axis, right? So if we take it about the x-axis, what's a point over here? The moment inertia of the point over there, well, basically is y squared. Moment of inertia, yeah. So basically, it's the uh, quantity away from the axis we are rotating and uh, y squared. So if we were to apply the same thing, we would just take the moment inertia of all those small little quantities and we will get the moment inertia of R. That's the, one, that's the second one. What's the other one? Monetary U. What do I mean by that? Well, let's just say that for a certain point, okay, um, there's a certain good we want to sell. The good is based on the factors of x and y. And for a certain point over there, we get a certain monetary value. Okay, and if we were to sum up all those little points together, what is the total monetary value that we get? Well, basically, it's the same thing. Take the double integral. 
And then after that, you know, we got payoff, same thing. And then we got popularity, density. Let's just say R is a certain town, right? Now, instead of visualizing Z as the height of the town, one may visualize Z as the population density. So if we, if we just take this uh, diagram as an example, if I want to stay over here at this point, basically what's the population, population density? Well, basically it's this high, let's just say Z1. If I want to stay somewhere over here, the population density is say Z2. So that is what we mean. Let's break out of the mold of thinking that the double integral always gives us the volume. Yes, it does. But that is not always the case because that is, depends how we define the function f of x and y. Now, um, most of you in your freshman university course, it probably just stays high and you keep on you know, saying, let's find the volume. But let's just take our understanding further than that. The double integral gives us a result um, depending on how or what's the meaning or the use of f of x and y. Population density is one, mass, moment of inertia, payoff. You know, and for each of those points, the freedom of varying both x and y. And for each of those points, we get a certain population, get a certain mass. We will sum them all up and we will get the total population, total mass, total payoff of the, the restrictions that we place on x and y, region 